Oh yeah! I am awake and alive and alive and alive. I'm so great, I gotta say it twice and cut it out once. My head's a syrup bottle that's getting tipped over every Wednesday. You're a storyteller in a storytelling podcast, and the only story you're telling now is a story about stories you don't want to tell! What the fuck? Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40 year old boy podcast? Uh, folks, guess what I own now? Guess what I own? I, well, I don't own it. A friend of mine owns it and gave it to me, sort of. Uh, he hasn't given it to me yet. This is hilarious. All right, it's not hilarious, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Uh, <laughs> I have a friend named Chip Chinnery who's a good guy, really good guy. And uh, Chip is like this amazing businessman sort. Like he's the type of dude who uh, all of a sudden, uh, like he owns two houses. I mean, who the fuck owns two houses? He actually rents a house to somebody. Like Chip Chinnery is a working actor who doesn't need to work because he has a home that is uh, that someone lives in and pays him rent to do so. I mean, it's just, you know, that's when he made money because he was in a bunch of commercials and on TV shows and shit like that because uh, he's a great improv guy. And uh, and then he went out and smartly invested his money and bought things. Like, I, I mean... <laughs> Dude, what the fuck? I, like I said, I invented in sushi futures, and they are falling. Let me tell you that, folks. Falling right out of my ass. That's, that's unfortunately where all of my money went, right, with my sushi futures. But, uh, but Chip Chinnery has invested in homes and all sorts of things. So uh, Chip's always been kind of after me to capitalize on 40-year-old boy industries. He's always like, hey, you know, you could do this, and you could do this, because he's an entrepreneur. He's a guy with ideas. He's an idea man, Chuck. You know what? <laughs> Feed mayonnaise to tuna fish. That's what, that's what Chip Chinnery says. Chip Chinnery says right away, feed mayonnaise to tuna fish. He thinks about it perfectly. Uh, good job. Um, and then, of course, you know what will happen? I, I swear to God, that's a bit from a movie in 1981. Chip Chinnery will somehow find a way to feed mayonnaise to tuna fish and make incredible amounts of cash. I, I know he will do it. He will. If anybody would do it, Chip Chinnery would do it. That's the Cheeseman, folks. All right. Uh, so I'm talking about my friend here for no reason. But uh, there is a reason because... Uh, He's constantly, uh, he's very nice, and he's, uh, he's, he might be my, I have two friends who actually listen to this podcast, <laughs> uh, and that's not even a joke. Like, it, literally, there's two guys that I know who listen to this podcast, uh, and, I've, and I've, I've even said to people, I'm like, hey, do me a favor. You know what? Uh, I understand my show's three hours, and you think it's stupid. That's fine. But uh, but I did a, I did a show this week that's just all music like it's a music show it's called the Interlude and it's uh, it's 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 only like twenty five minutes long I mean you should give it a spin and I'll try to listen to that nope nothing at all nobody listens at all and contacts me you guys do which is great uh, but I uh, as we know I crave approval and I live on kudos it's the fuel that fires up my fat car so I mean I need to hear from people that I kind of know and I'd like to get some you know a little shine a little attaboy from people I've uh, known for a while and so then I'll say to them hey man you should give this a spin and uh, a spin because apparently I've burned it to acid for them and then they have to bring out their victrola and play it in their fucking parlor and then of course jimmy stewart stops by and lassos the moon and then the mom yells and they hang up the phone so um it's a wonderful life folks it is truly a wonderful life isn't it so i have two friends who listen to the podcast one of them is our friendship chinnery who i've mentioned and i'll get to in a second uh and the other one is my friend russ mcgarry who has a podcast called three non-joggers if you if you're looking for a podcast about running <laughs> and oh my god who isn't who among you out there is is right now thinking i wish i could hear him and you know what he told me a guy i heard he had a podcast because uh my buddy russ um russ mcgarry is fucking hysterical all right and russ mcgarry is a guy who uh i lost i just like lost contact with him like we weren't he became because he got jobs like he got real jobs with writing and then started hanging out with the people who had jobs and are writing and he wanted nothing to do with me the last time well this is bullshit uh, I've only seen him a few times. I, I called him once when Karen left, when Karen bailed on me, and I called him in my house. And this is fucking dudes. Look, you've all been here with this sort of thing. Well, maybe you haven't, but if you haven't, l listen to this. Don't be, don't get to this spot. Uh, I had to call Russ because at the time Russ, I think, was writing for Bam Margera's family, whatever the fuck that show was. I don't know. Bam slaps his dad in the toilet. I think that was the name of the show. If that wasn't the name of the show, it certainly should have been the name of the show. Uh, or at least maybe that, that may have been just the segments that Russ handled. Russ was in charge of Bam slapping his dad on the toilet and Uncle Vito finger banging a 12 year old. I think that's what Russ was in charge of writing. Didn't that happen? Is that his name? I don't know. That guy went to jail, right? What the fuck's his name? Uncle Vito? I don't forget his fucking name. Who knows? Some dirtbag. Another, another fi family that MTV unearthed and decided to follow around with cameras and it turned out badly. What a shock! 
It's like these teen moms. You see these teen moms on TV, and they're getting all this filming, and they have a television show. And uh, you know, eventually, they're going to be middle, not, not middle aged moms. They're going to get out of teen moms, and MTV's not going to want to fucking care. And they're going to go, "What network shows us? What? What's the next network?" Because they, they, those people are sixteen, and they're on TV filming. You know, they're and they've got formula, and they're raising kids. For the, I don't even know if they have formula. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. They could be running around in fucking stack heels and putting their baby in a goddamn uh, uh, fire pit on the beach. I have no idea. I don't watch those fucking shows. I'm not. This is not even a joke. I don't. I, that's the name of the show this week, by the way. This is not even a joke. Um, I haven't watched MTV. I think in like six years. Like I don't. I don't think I've ever even turned it on. The last thing I watched on MTV, I think, was I watched the premiere of New, of Jersey Shore. It's not even. Uh, I almost said it again. God, I got to stop. Um, but yeah, I, I watched that, and then they kept hyping the one where she was going to get punched in the face. So, uh, so I actually would TiVo it and just to see her get punched in the face, to see Snooki get punched in the face, and then the show aired where she got punched in the face, and they didn't fucking show her get punched in the face. They showed the guy rear back and go to throw, and then not connect. Uh, 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 but of course they released on the internet her getting punched in the face because they felt it was too delicate and sensitive for people to watch on MTV uh, I got news for you you show those other just those motherfuckers talking is too delicate and sensitive to show on MTV that fucking cadre of assholes my god what a fucking beach house full of death alright so uh, so that's the last time I ever watched MTV and then those teen moms are on there now I heard and uh and I, 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 that's just for pedophiles, right? P- teen mom? It's it's for teenagers and pedophiles because pedophiles are like, oh, that 15-year-old girl fucked somebody once. That's the only reason they would tune in, right? To envision that 15-year-old girl on her back with her ankles up over her head. That's it. That's the only reason you would watch teen mom is if you're some pedophile who wants to think about that. Uh, and by the way, now that I've painted myself in that corner, I should tell you that I've never watched the show, folks. It's very important to mention that. I know who they are because I see them in my blogs and they follow them around in bikinis like... Uh, uh, I think they're all named Amber. Isn't that because uh, it's called Teen Mom, but I think it should just be called Amber's. Amber Alert. Why wouldn't you call it that? There's like five Ambers with babies and just call it an Amber Alert. There you go, MTV. Take that idea. Send me $10,000. I'll call that easy. Just take that idea and run with it. You've got to be able to find six 15 year olds named Amber with babies in this country, right? And just call it Amber Alert. Done. Pay me. Uh, and I, you know what? I have a friend named Russ who'd be happy to write on that show. Why not get Russ involved? Uh, Russ McGarry is my friend, and he has a podcast called Three Non Joggers, which is a podcast about running. I think he wants me to be on, and I'm going to be on. He sent me like three uh, different emails. He's he's written. He's all right. Uh, like when I say I have two friends who listen, uh, Russ contacts me to tell me that he enjoys the show because Russ also. Uh, I should tell you this about Russ. Some oh, oh you know what? I didn't even finish the story about MTV when he was working at Bam's joint. Uh, Karen left me and I was fucking dead. I was in an apartment I couldn't afford. Everything was going to hell and I had no job. And so I actually called Russ to basically beg for a job, like to say anything, man. If you've got uh, a PA job, if you've got anything over there, I would, I would love to do it. And he, it was just awkward and uncomfortable for him, I'm sure, because I hadn't seen him in weeks, months, maybe. And, uh, and he was very nice and he's just like, I'll do what I can. But I mean, there's, you know, those jobs are fucking limited and uh, not to mention the fact that Bam's got 19 cousins on the fucking payroll over there. <laughs> Just so they can be around whenever he slaps Vito and they can laugh. They, they, they just they staff up with idiots who will laugh at Bam. That's basically what those shows are. Um, it, because, you know, Russ was just you know, having his soul crushed every week by those shows. All right. So anyway, uh, but uh, but if you're if you're the showrunner of that show, Russ loved it. So <laughs> um, Russ does extreme running uh, every Friday. Russ, I think, runs 30 miles. Uh, I think. I don't know. He, he might run 100 miles. I have no fucking idea. Because I'll tell you what, if you ever tell me you run more than one mile at a time, the number at that point is in play. Who fucking cares? If you told me, hey, I run a mile every Friday, I'd go, oh, that sounds like fun and you'd probably be in shape. If you say two miles, you might as well say a thousand because it just seems fucking ludicrous to do that. Uh, although I recognize that I have to be doing that coming up soon and that's what I'll be doing with my life. Um, so you all be able to mock me at that point. Um but Russ, so he, he listens to me on his long runs on Fridays, and then he's kind enough to write me and tell me what he thinks of the show, that he thinks it's funny and, and all that. So then he decided to invite me onto his podcast, The Three Non-Joggers. Then he heard last week's show uh, in which I mentioned the Warrior Dash in Portland and that I'm going to be training. Well, Russ lives in Portland, so he wants me to either do the show now and then do it live with them in September when I go out to do the Warrior Dash, or do it at, you know to talk about my training and kind of because they they their audience they're getting f- featured in I guess running magazines and things like that. So the the those people those crazy motherfuckers are listening to them, 
Uh, but then they've got regular people, I guess, listening too, because Russ has done Never Not Funny, and he's really funny, and I, I've name-checked him a few times. So uh, uh, I, I'm going to do the show. Oh, well, all right, you know what? Let me tell you this too, by the way. Uh, the podcast has been a, a, around for... I don't know. I think they've only done like 20 episodes of the podcast. I got no fucking clue. Could have been, again, literally, if you tell me you do one episode of the podcast and then two, it might be a thousand. I don't fucking pay attention to anything. I barely pay attention to my show. Um, but Russ has asked me kindly to be on the show and I'm going to do it eventually. Uh, and by the way, I haven't written him back. So, I mean, this is, uh, Russ, right now you're running on mile 19. Uh, guess what? I'm in. So I'll call you and I'll let you know when. Uh, but the thing is, they they do their podcast. They've only been doing it for, I don't know, however long. Uh, but go to the iTunes store and look up 3-9 Joggers, folks, and uh, it'll come right up. And guess what? Guess what they have right there with their name and their podcast? They have a logo. Uh, they have a logo for 3-9 Joggers. I think it's just three dudes, and it says 3-9 Joggers. Uh, go to my page if you get time. Go to 40-Year-Old Boy. Just Google the 40-year-old boy. No, don't. Go to iTunes and look for it. Search me in the iTunes store. Search Mike Schmidt or search the 40-year-old boy. You know what you're going to see? Uh, some purple piece of shit, fucking fake microphone, nonsense, generic bullshit stand-in thing that iTunes has come up with. That's been there for fucking five weeks. And I don't know what the fuck to do, folks. Seriously. I, I don't know if I have to dig up Steve Jobs and fuck him in his skull's ear. I don't know what the fuck I got to do to get the attention of the motherfucking iTunes store. But it's like, I look, I, I have enough problems thinking that I'm amateur night. All right. I got enough problems thinking that there's the big shows and I can never be the big shows. And I got me and the fucking underneath, you know, because the big shows are the crust right now. If you get a pie, if you get a podcast, pie on the top is the crust and that's your Marins and your Corollas and your Pardos and your fucking Burrs and your Fitzsimmonses and all those people and you got to plunge a fork through to get to the very bottom and I'm the graham cracker crust of the fucking podcast pie folks and I recognize that I'm not even the delicious filling I am the base I'm not you know what fuck that I'm not even the graham cracker crust I am the tin all right I understand that the, the big shows are the, on the top there, the, the crunchy crust and the delicious brown uh, wonderfulness, and then you plunge a fork in there and you get in there, oh, and the delicious filling of the Pete Holmes, and the delicious filling of the Greg Proopses, and the delicious fillings of, uh, of the 445 Kevin Smith shows, and the delicious cherry filling of all of the comedy bang bang shows. I recognize that. That's the pie. That's what your podcast pie is made out of, folks. So they get respect. All right, all of the chefs at iTunes whip up the pie and they make sure that that's good. Well, you know what they don't fucking care about? The tin. Because it's been five fucking weeks and me the podcast pie tin on, on, the, on the bottom a complete look i recognize again the great shows at the top and i'm underneath so i get enough problems in my own head thinking i'm not as good as them or i shouldn't be as good as them or nobody looks at me as good as them or i don't get to pay attention as much as them and i have to shout hey look at me hey down here in the 200s hey i'm sort of in the charts fuck all right i i have to deal with all of that every week in my head but now the past five weeks I've had to go to my fucking page and not, and I have no logo. There's because normally there's the Panda Boy logo and it says the forty year old boy. It's just simple. It's understated. It says everything that I needed to say. Uh, but it's been gone for five weeks and I cannot get anybody to fucking fix it. I, I've I've gone through Lily because again I don't know what to do. I, I I will contact people and tell them what to do, but Lily can do that just as well as me and she knows who to do it. So I've I've asked Lily to do it several times. She's contacted Libsyn, Libsyn who hosts my podcast. And their answer is, ah, it's an iTunes problem. You know, eventually it'll just pick up and they'll find the logo again. Uh when? Fucking when? I, and it's funny, everybody's like, and poor poor Lily, because she's the fucking go between. So she'll go, look, the onion is also missing their logo. I don't give a fuck. People don't know who The Onion is. So if you were to say, hey, look, The Onion podcast lost its logo, people would be like, oh, that's crazy. If you say, hey, The 40-Year-Old Boy podcast lost its logo, they go, I don't know what the fuck that is. I have no clue. And do I think that the addition of a logo would change their fucking minds and make them come on board? I got no idea. But all I know is it makes me look like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Even though I have nothing to do with it. Lily uploads it. It goes there. Libsyn takes care of it. Once it's, once we hit send, we've got nothing to do with any of it. And unfortunately, she's contacted iTunes how many times? Three fucking times. Three times. And they, they haven't written back. They haven't said fuck you. They haven't said anything at all. They're too busy at the fucking mothership in Cupertino developing another goddamn deeper voiced fucking robot to live in your fucking phone. <laughs> giving me the eye finger in my eye fucking face. It's, it's infuriating. Because again, folks, I have an inferiority complex as it is. All right? I don't need iTunes to jump in. Maybe that's what the, maybe that's what the I stands for. Uh, maybe I'm on inferiority tunes. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Fix my fucking logo. What do I need to do? Honestly, I, do I do I have to call Bill Gates to you know uh, prank call you and make fun of you? I don't fucking know what to do. You you have eight billion, not even billion, eight hundred billion. They have what's after a billion? A fuck you. That's you know that's what it is. That's what's after a billion. If you if you have a hundred billion, you you just have one fuck you. That's what you have. 
fuck the universe, fuck the earth, and so they don't have to fucking answer my thing. And I get that, fine. But if you go through, again, none of the big shows have this problem. Fuck, new shows that have just debuted don't have this fucking problem. But my logo's been gone for five fucking weeks, and I can't get them to answer it. I can't. And it drives me crazy. You know who does have a logo? Three non-joggers. They got a logo, for fuck's sake. They've been around for a month, if that. <laughs> Uh, but then again, that's because the three of them teamed up and ran it to Apple's uh, headquarters from Portland. <laughs> they, they had a relay race and they each ran, you know, a 300 mile segment of it and went to Cupertino and dropped it off. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. So I'm going to do Russ's podcast eventually, but folks, what I, I, I'm so mad about this fucking logo. Like I, I, I it's crazy. Cause again, all I do is obsess about the show and whether it's like, do it, is it good enough? Is it not good enough? And with no logo, it just looks amateur night. It looks amateur fucking night. And I had nothing to do with it, folks. Don't think, because normally, here's the thing. I'm a lazy fucker. And normally if shit happens, I, you know, because I mean, fuck, already year four isn't for sale yet. Uh, but that, that also has not, we've been back low with Kickstarter stuff. All this bullshit isn't done. So it just weighs on me and it rolls fucking downhill. And then I got to throw on my Indiana Jones fucking leather jacket and try to run away from it for fuck's sake. Uh, so I, I just, I can't, I'm furious. So, uh, so Russ wants me to do his podcast. I don't even know how I got into that. Uh, how did I get into Russ? They, uh, they want me to do the podcast. All right. But he's, oh, he's on, he's one of the guys who listens. Oh, and Chip Tinnery. All right. All right. So, uh, so Chip and Russ listen to the show. So Russ is very nice and he reaches out and tells me that he likes the show. Uh, Chip uh wrote, writes me every week and he's like dude you should do this and he has all these great ideas that an entrepreneur would do uh but not me i wouldn't do that i'm too busy you know wondering where my fucking logo is to concentrate on anything at this point <laughs> so and that's the thing that makes me laugh is chip is like he's got all these grandiose ideas that are fucking brilliant but it's like dude go to my page i don't even have a logo for fuck's sake i mean <laughs> go look at my blog frozen in time last august because i was mad that i couldn't get a comma in there without it making it look stupid jesus christ <laughs> I barely have a web guy at this point. Poor Ryan. I, and he wrote me. He's like, ready to go. I think I said that last week. Uh, and I, I wrote him. I'm like, it's not you. I talked about that last week. Fuck. Uh, God, already. Year to year five. And uh, I'm on fumes in episode two, for fuck's sake. Bitching and moaning about nothing. Uh, so Chip writes me this week. And he says, uh, hey, I really like what you do. And, uh, and he says some very nice things. And I won't go into it. But he goes, so um, I've always thought that you should be branded as 40yearoldboy.com. But you're, you know, MikeSchmidtComedy.com, and uh, I've mentioned it to you in the past, and uh, you've never really shown any interest in that. You've thought about it, but you didn't think it was mattering. And he goes, so I've been always monitoring 40YearOldBoy.com. He goes, so uh, I want to tell you that it, finally this week it came up, and I bought it. I bought it right away for you. You can have it. He goes, and then he writes, uh, because I really think you're missing an opportunity here to do sorts of some things, and then... Uh, and so I, I was I thought it was amazing. I mean, it was cool that Chip would do that. And then he writes in the next paragraph, uh, you know, sometimes I think that I should be in business with you because I have ideas of, of what you could do and what should be done. And those are these sorts of things. And I thought that was very nice, you know, and I, I read it and I did not write him back, of course, because I'm very busy, folks. Um, but my favorite part was the next day I get an email from Chip and uh, and I think he slept on it <laughs> because he writes, hey, uh. I'm not saying that I'm going into business with you. I just want to make sure you realize that I'm not uh, telling you <laughs> that I, I'm not sure if that's a good thing or that we should be in business together. <laughs> like, I don't know if what I have no idea what happened in that 15 hour period that made him realize, oh, man, I think I think I told Schmidt that we're supposed to be in business together. That's not fucking good news. Because what if he says yes, then I'm supposed to do shit? That's terrible. I got to sit back and collect rent from the second house, for fuck's sake. I don't want to be busy doing that. I already bought the guy a website. Maybe he'll fucking stand down and take that and run with it. Now, he's not going to bother me, is he? Uh, but he felt strongly enough about it to write me a second email saying, hey, uh, we're, we're not in business together. You realize that, correct? Because I think he thinks that I was starting to put his name on business loans all over the country. I was going to every bank I possibly could. Well, Chip Chenry's going to co-sign for me. He owns two houses. Done. Rubber stamp. Here's your cash. <laughs> uh, so, so Chip, I, again, I didn't write back to that one either, but it just made me laugh that in a panic, he furiously wrote me. He's like, hey, look, uh, we're not in business together. You, uh, and I want to write him back and go, too late. Uh, I have a written verbal contract from you that states that we should be in business together. And if you'll notice, I've deleted the word maybe from that to indicate that you really, really wanted to be in business with me. Uh, now, first order of business, Chip, call iTunes and get my logo reinstated. If you could do that for me. That would really show me how far you want to go for Mike Schmidt Industries. 
uh, or Mike Schmidt Incorporated, or, or what they, you know, yeah, as a matter of fact, why would I even get, just go ahead and buy iTunes. Could you do that, Chip? Go ahead, <laughs> buy iTunes, and then get my logo reinstated, because that that's fine. And again, I, I'm not asking for a piece of iTunes, because you and I are not in business together. I don't know if you've been made aware of that. Oh, actually, you were made aware of that, because you sent me a very strongly worded letter telling me that we were absolutely not in business together, and I should not purport to tell people that we were. Uh, so I will stand down when it comes to whether or not you and I are partners. Um, but tell that to Wells Fargo. All right, so <laughs> so that's the bottom line is I own 40-year-oldboy.com, folks. What will I do with it? I don't know. Because what am I doing with MikeSchmidtComedy.com? I don't know right now. Everything's in a holding pattern while my friend paints. Uh, and then once that's done and everybody gets their, their allotted things, uh, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm hand-delivering some next week in Cleveland, and I'm hand-delivering some in Boston in a few uh, in a month or so. Um, I will not be hand delivering any in any other venue, folks. It's just if you want it hand delivered, come to Cleveland or Boston. That's it. I'm not schlepping it anywhere else across this great land of ours. Um, yeah, folks. <laughs> Fuck. Still want me on your podcast, Russ? <laughs> um, I'm doing Russ McGarry's podcast, as I've mentioned, the Three Non Joggers podcast, as he runs 800 miles a day. Or at least on Friday, uh, and I can't even imagine what because I'm look. I we all know that I'm uh, going to be see, be training, uh, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second because uh, there's something to tell you folks. But uh, I, I've talked about I'm by the end of year five I'm going to be an animal. In September I'm doing the Warrior Dash, so we're doing the build up and all that kind of stuff. And uh, by the way, let me reach out to all of you folks who have shown uh, interest in joining me for the Warrior Dash, uh, which is really great. And at the same time, really awful because it indicates that I can't drop out of doing the Warrior Dash. <laughs> <laughs> if there winds up being like a Team 40YOB up there, then uh, yeah. then you actually need me there to to faint. And I'm I'm I've, as I've written to people, and you guys know this if you've received notes from me. Uh, I need as many people as I possibly can to get onto this team uh, because the more people to carry me over the finish line. <laughs> The better. The more people to drag me underneath the barbed wire and toss me over the giant wall and ram me through the rubber ricochet and through the scrapyard and all that other bullshit I mentioned last week, the better. So uh, let's get, uh, I, I don't care if there's like 80 people on this team. Because then, I, maybe I don't even run the goddamn thing. Maybe there's 80 people. You guys just put me on like one of those Cleopatra barges and just trot me through. Uh, that's perfect. I was going to say tote, and I think it said chote. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm the king. I'm your king. I'm king, forty year old boy. That's perfect. I'll get a crown and a scepter and a goddamn uh, what's that velvet thing they wear? Is that a cape? Something like a cape. Uh, the royal robe, like that thing. Yeah, it's a oh, a coronation robe. There you go. Our friend Lily Bunched Up has come up with that. Uh, by the way, those, uh, those of you who've asked me, uh, Lily Bunched Up is is better this week. I will tell you that she is uh, certainly not cured by any means, but she's not about to break into uh, tears at any second. Um. But uh, yeah, so and uh, and thankfully she's also uh, back to wearing very thin clothing, which I'm excited no about. Bra. That makes me very happy. And no bra, because who needs support when your back hurts? No, she got the bra. She was more worried about the class hurting. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, I think you shouldn't wear a bra. I think that's a good move. Definitely, it would help your back if you didn't wear a bra, because normally that's antithetical. <laughs> Women out there who have uh, larger breasts will will realize that normally a bra helps. But no, I think in this case it's very important that you don't wear a bra. See, it hurts. So Lily knows that she shouldn't wear a bra, and I'm all for that, uh, which is good. And uh, she actually called me today before I came over. She said, do you think I should wear a bra? It kind of hurts. I said, nah, I wouldn't do it. Uh, that's my medical opinion. I don't want to get into my personal My personal opinion, of course, thinks you should be all bundled up in a parka or something. Uh, but I think right now, definitely go without a bra. That's a good move. Um <laughs> <laughs> and if I seem distracted as I talk to you today, folks, now you understand why, quite frankly. <laughs> um, so, so Russ is out running 800 yards. Uh, 800 yards? No, that's that's light. That's that's like a that's not even a warm up. 800 yards. He runs he runs 40 miles a Friday. That's fucking crazy to me. And, and again, what kind of shape could he possibly be? And he is essentially there is no Russ McGarry. There's just a name only. That's it. It's just if you're out somewhere and you think you see a shirt and shoes go by, that's Russ McGarry because. <laughs> He's lost so much weight. He's actually a hologram of himself. You think Tupac was a hologram? Fuck that. Russ McGarry is, a, is the real hologram as he runs 400 miles a goddamn Friday. He must weigh nine pounds. He's, it's just a hologram in New Balance shoes. That's it. That's all you'll see. It's like those old movies of the Invisible Man where you just see shoes walking across the room. That's Russ McGarry when he runs his 400 miles. He can't exist. Russ McGarry does not exist. He's a blur. He's a blur with a podcast. And that podcast has a fucking logo. That's right. 
The man doesn't even exist. He is air. He is air in New Balance. And by the way, I don't even know if it's New Balance. I'm not, I don't run. I don't know anything about that. I'm sure I'm going to get all of the, the legion of long distance runners to write me and go, we don't use New Balance. We use new Japanese space kickers or whatever the fuck. I have no idea what you guys wear. Uh, by the way, Japanese space kickers. That's my own line of running shoe that I'm coming out with soon. Uh, as soon as I can get the Japanese on board. I've got Chip Chinnery talking to them right now. He's on the phone. Uh, Konnichiwa, Chip Jenner here. Konnichiwa, Konnichiwa. I don't know. Uh, um, I have nothing. Have you noticed that, folks? That I got nothing this week. I'm shoehorning a bunch of bullshit into nowhere because I did nothing last week. I didn't live life. Uh, I did, but it's like I, the thing I want to tell you about. I don't want to tell you about right off the bat because it's the one thing I. It's the only thing I have to tell you about. So I'm just clinging to it. Like it's my precious. That's what it is. It's the ring. I have one story to tell you, and it's the ring. And I'm fucking goloming the shit out of it, and I'm just staring at myself in a goddamn pond, realizing I'm not funny. All right. Um, uh, so I, Cleveland next week and, and I'll, I swear to God, I'll be, I'll shake this by next. Well, there's a show next week too. Holy shit. I got to be funny in that show too. I, I was just going to say, I promise my funny will be back by Cleveland. My funny has to be back by next Tuesday for fuck's sake. I'm doing another podcast. Is it too early to do a clip show in this year? It's year five. Let's put up a clip show. Let's put up the best of year five. <laughs> let's put up the best of year five, which would basically let's rerun last week's show. Because there is nothing in this week's show that's going to qualify for the best of year five. Oh, my God. Talk about a lull. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> so that means I well, I mean, I'll at least have that in two weeks. I know I've got that. I feel like you ever see the guy in Bachelor Party when he's explaining what marriage is like? And he's explaining like the, right in the beginning it's fine, and then after a few months, you know, you're betting ball games, and then it's football season, and then Howard Cosell is there, and you don't have to worry about your wife nagging you. Uh, that's how I feel now about this podcast. It's like, well, I'm in a year two, and I'm kind of just drifting through, but then I go to Cleveland next week, and I'll have something to talk about the week after that. So it's like I have four shows that I'm traveling to, and I know for sure in year five, at least four of the shows will be covered. I know at least those four shows will have life because I can't live life, folks. I wish I could go out and experience life and bring you the experiences that I have. I wish I could tell you about my interactions with other people. I have none. I live like a fucking shut-in vampire. That's right, not even a vampire, because a vampire at least goes out. And a vampire, we've seen the movies, you guys know the legend, vampire wakes up at night and he flies around like a bat and he goes out looking for chicks to bite their necks. I can't even fucking do that, folks. I'm a shut-in vampire. I'm up all night, but I'm, I'm chained. My coffin is a building on Riverside Boulevard. God damn it. And I'm in it all fucking night long. Jesus Christ. I can't, like, if I was a vampire, I'd go out and live the great life of a vampire. Like, uh... Like George Hamilton and fucking Love at First Bite. Why is that my only reference? Why is that the first reference for vampires? I, how many vampire movies have there been? And that was all that popped into my head was George Hamilton in Love at First Bite. Because my mom loved that movie. Oh my God, did she love that movie. She, every, I think every time it was on, she watched it. And, I, and that means literally in theaters. My mom would go watch every single showing in the theater. She would... I raised myself, folks. All right. Uh-huh. Because my mom was chasing George Hamilton around the United States. My mom's got a thing for tan and teeth. All right, so. Because uh, he's a vampire. Fangs, teeth. I don't know what you fucking call him. I'm not a vampire. Like I said, I am. But I, I'm, I'm a shady vampire. i got to stay in one building. Awful. Awful. I have to whisper awful. That's how awful it is. Uh, <laughs> so. I should have just flown anywhere this week just so I had something to talk about for fuck's sake. Although, you know what? Fuck that. I, you know, I, I, because I usually I'll tell you guys about the things that happen in, uh, in airports. Uh, hey, Americans out there who are biting my style, get your own protest at the airport for fuck's sake. <laughs> you see the woman in Denver who took all of her clothes at the airport? Yeah. See the guy in Portland who took off all of his clothes at the airport? They got to listen to this podcast, right? They have to be. They just took it to its natural conclusion because I had my pants fall down, certainly. Uh, but then there's pictures. My favorite part is then they, every story runs the pictures of like the, the, the fat dude in Portland and then the fat dude in, uh, or the fat lady in Denver. And they just they took all their clothes off as a protest. Uh, look, I made sure to wear Spider-Man pants underneath my pants because I knew my pants were going to fall down because they're going to see my belt. Uh, but I would never go uh, fucking full throttle at the airport. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, I'm, I, as I, I've said many times before, if, if I look, if, he, if he's coming out, he's coming out for business. He's not just coming out. My cock has no interest in just sightseeing at the airport. My cock, if he comes out, there's action involved. Something's going to happen. Uh, it, like, like, all right, let's say if I'm in Denver and that girl takes all of her clothes, maybe then I take off all my clothes because it's like, Hey, are we doing something here? That's it's like, cause she sent up a flare of, Hey, fuck me here at the Denver airport. Boom. I'm right there on the scene. Although I'm not folks. Cause again, like I said, I have no life. I can't live life. I can't just go ahead and I'm not a vampire. I can just go around biting indiscriminate necks. I chose my neck. 
I'm a vampire. I've got one and with one neck that I've chosen forever. Uh, <laughs> people wrote me they're like, "Do you see the guy who took all his clothes off at the airport?" Yes, I did. The biters, they're you know, they're they're vampires because they're biting my style, folks. If I can bring up some 80s rap lingo on you. Please. Why not? I've got nothing else this week. <laughs> talking in circles, bringing up 80s rap lingo, talking about the holograms and my buddy Russ running around in a blur in shoes. Uh, and did you, and I look, folks. I mentioned Tupac. Did you see the Tupac hologram? How fucking amazing was it? It was amazing, right? I loved it. I thought it was great. Uh, I and I I just picture all of the people in in the crowd. Like, come on, look, it's Coachella. You had to figure two thirds of those people thought it was really Tupac, like back from the dead, right? I mean, because they were stoned out of their fucking mind. They had no idea what it was or it wasn't. And then the other third had they just were like, oh look, another black guy on stage. Like they had no clue. <laughs> Why is that black guy glowing? That was probably the question that was being asked more at Coachella than any other. Hey, why is that black guy glowing on stage? Is he a vampire? Do vampires glow? I have no idea if they do. Uh, they twinkle, do they? Not, uh, not me. I, I've, the luster is off of my vampireness. I, I don't shine at all. I'm like the, I'm like a worker vampire. It's like if vampires were ants, and then there's like the queen, and then there's a bunch of drone uh, fucking vampires. I'm a drone. That's it. God damn it. I'm sorry, I was trying to pay attention to doing the show, but Lily is drawing faces on her toenails with a Sharpie. That's how auto, That's how checked out of this show she is, for fuck's sake. She, she saw exactly that I had nothing to bring to the table, and she's like, you know what, fuck this, I'm going to do some uh, self-inflicted artwork. That's what I'm going to do, and she's drawing faces. Uh, yeah, that's all right. Why, why, so I have more people to hate me? That's quite all right. I've, I've got, trust me, I don't need to not make them laugh either. I, I'd like you're like oh I painted faces on my toenails so you would have an audience I don't need another silent audience all right I, I hate myself enough I don't need ten more people to hate me at this point point. and what what are you doing on that one now very surprised oh oh a shocked face he's shocked at my helpers is that what he is he's oh my god he can't believe it ah oh, fuck you know what, let's just get a hologram to do this fucking show why not let's just get a hologram to sit in this chair because it would be that trust me it would be much better than anything you have to deal with for the past uh, 40 minutes or whatever the fuck is it 40 30 holy god this is awful it seemed like 40 <laughs> oh fuck we need a hologram that's what we need uh the two i i'm sorry i thought the two-pack hologram was interesting i i it, i saw it and i was i if you were in the audience I, the only thing that i'm mad about is they tipped it they should have never said that it was common because they told people a few days beforehand that they were going to do it. If they hadn't mentioned it, if they would have just sprung it on everybody, how fucking crazy would that have been? It's like all of a sudden there's Snoop and Dre and then out of the stage rises Tupac and then he talks to Coachella and he actually says, hey, the fuck's up Coachella? Dude, they would lose their mind. Uh, uh, although I guess they didn't want to create a stampede of white people freaking out because a black zombie had just shown up. <laughs> that would honestly. And, uh, and honest, wait, does race even matter in a zombie? I don't think so, right? They... <laughs> They eat brains and that's it. Does it? Uh, how how much of a racist do you have to be to be angry about ra- a black zombie? Like you're racist even against a black zombie. Like do you then let if like if you were there and a bunch of zombies were coming at you, would you kill the black ones first because you hated them that much? No, you just <laughs> zombies are zombies. So why should it be that you and I should get along with all the zombies? All right, so is that going to happen every week? Every week I'm going to quote Depeche Mode. Uh, that's what Cody wants. If that's what Cody wants, that's what Cody gets. Uh, by year two. So, um, so remember I said two thirds of the audience was high. And then I said a third of the audience was just, uh, uh, they were like, what's going on? I don't even remember what I said. What the fuck did I even say? I'm as shocked as your toe. I can't remember what the fuck I'm saying to myself. <laughs> I loved the arrival of the hologram. I'm sorry. I think, cause it, the best part about that, when that Tupac hologram showed up and it worked, you know that that second Gene Simmons thought about killing Paul Stanley. You know it. You know, and, and right the second it worked and it was performing and people were kind of cheering and not really caring about it and it seemed to be real, Gene Simmons immediately went, how do I kill Paul Stanley so I can keep all of the kiss money for myself? And vice versa. Certainly vice versa. Paul Stanley's been looking for a way to get rid of Gene Simmons, too. I'm sure the two of them now, that's, that's the best part is there's now this weird spy versus spy dynamic where the two of them have to try to kill one another to try to catch all of the kiss money for themselves. And who are the innocent bystanders right now? Tommy and Eric. That's who it is. Tommy and Eric, the the faux, st- you know, essentially they are Peter and Ace holograms. When you think about it, Tommy and Eric are just Peter and Ace holograms. Because with the makeup, you can put it on anybody. You know what? Fuck you. Do- oh my god. Oh my god. You know what? This is perfect. 
this is great. You know how when uh, like the kings are fighting with one another, they say that the uh, the underclass will, will riot and then kill the kings? Nobody ever says that. I just made it up. <laughs> when well, all right, when like high level intrigue is happening, you don't see what's going on and beat the server. It's like when you see all the popular podcasts in the pie crust, you don't know what's happening with the pie tin. The pie tin is here and he's plotting and waiting to try to become the crust himself. That's never going to happen. But uh, <laughs> what I mean is when there's uh, when there's big all right, I'm trying to figure out how to say this. You're paying attention to this and you don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on in the un- uh, underneath. Yeah. Fuck, I can't talk today. Uh, the bottom line is, here, right, here's what I wanted to say Well, I'm trying to be cute. While Gene and Paul are fighting and Eric and Tommy are just observing, I think Ace and Peter should swoop in. This is their moment. <laughs> this is their moment. You know what Ace and Peter should do? Sir, listen to me. Hear me out. All right, I already gave MTV a winner idea in the beginning of the show with Amber Alert. All right. They're going to take Amber Alert and run with it and put it on the air and make a ton of dough. And I'll take 10 grand. I'd rather have more, but 10 grand's fine. Uh, But here's another thing. How brilliant is this idea? God damn it. You're with me. Ace and Peter, while while Gene and Paul are figuring out the hologram nonsense and trying to kill one another, or even while they're not, even while they're putting together a kiss album, because you know they don't ever call Eric and Tommy. They call them and they're like, hey, Tommy, come in and move my uh, fucking gear around and play a kazoo. That's it. Those guys get no respect. So, Eric and Tommy, if you're listening, and I know you are, Eric Singer, Tommy Thayer. Stand in holograms for Peter and Ace. Here's what you do. And uh, first of all, I, 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 I fuck that. Tommy and Eric, I, you can't take the initiative. All right, you're just the, you're the pawns in this entire thing, because the real chess masters are Gene and Paul on one side and Ace and Peter on the other. And by the way, I would love to play chess with Ace Frehley. So <laughs> I would destroy him at chess, right? Couldn't I? I would have to. What if Ace Frehley was like a chess grandmaster, but he was like drunk all the time and you had no fucking idea? He chose instead to be a guy who wore space makeup and play a smoking guitar, but in reality, he could go ahead and defeat the greatest grandmasters in chess in the world. What if all, what if seriously, when he wasn't touring, Ace Frehley was in the park playing speed chess with Russians and crushing them two at a time? Ace Frehley with the cognitive thought that no one knew that he had. All right, so. Ace and Peter, you're listening to me, right? Because you listen to this show. You're not doing anything else. What else are you doing with your life since Peter and Gene cut you out? I'm sorry, Paul and Gene cut you out. I mixed up myself. Ace and Peter. Right now, while, while Gene and Paul are putting the finishing touches on their album or trying to figure out hologram technology, whatever the fuck they're doing, Ace and Peter, you need to call Eric and Tommy and steal them away and form Kiss 2. <laughs> call yourselves Kiss 2. And now you guys get to be Gene and Paul. Because you know that Tommy and Eric are already playing you guys. Tommy and Eric are starring as you. Well, now you guys can be the Gene and Paul of the band. And then you call the shots for fuck's sakes. You won't be sitting around getting gray hair and playing chess in the goddamn park. Now you guys are the leaders of Kiss 2 and you're rampaging across the United States. Granted, playing smaller theaters, I would imagine, but still. A Kickstarter reward. Her name is Maureen Boyle. Her name is Maureen Boyle. Her name is Maureen Boyle. His name is Andy Hubble. His name is Andy Hubble. His name is Andy Hubble. So I mentioned a lot of you are trying to be on the Warrior Dash team. I don't know if there's a team just yet. I know there's a warrior dash. I got to talk to KC. Uh, it was funny. Last week, I, uh, I said a lot of, hey, KC, I'm going to call you. And hey, Gio, I'm going to call you. I called nobody uh, this week. Um, uh, long story. But uh, but I didn't. And Gio, I, I think I lost Gio's number because I was going to call him today. And uh, and then I could not find it, which is not good. Uh, so my only way to contact you is via the podcast. Really? I could email you probably. Nah. I'll reach out across the universe via the uh, the podcast and your earbuds. Um so, Gio, you have, if you have my phone, call me. Well, you don't, I'll send you an email tonight. What the fuck? Who cares? No one cares. Uh, but if you really do want to do this Warrior Dash team, i got to talk to KC and figure out when I'm going to do it. I think Saturday at 4 o'clock is the time I'm shooting for. And uh, I know you think that's late. But for me, I, I've i got to go as late as I possibly can. I can't go at 9 in the morning. I don't even want to do the fucking thing. I mean, I do. <laughs> I do. I was enthused last week because, again, I want to be an animal. You guys know that. I want to be a fucking monster at the end of year five. That's the plan. Uh, and and you, you say to yourself, well, Mike, what are you doing about that plan? Well, I'm about to tell you, folks. We have made the first step on becoming a monster. We have taken the first step in the long journey into chiseling ourselves into something that we can care about that would be a respectable human being, someone that wouldn't be afraid to walk on a plane and, and have a seat and sit next to a normal person. 
Um, I mentioned last week that there was gyms, and I, I was looking at other gyms and all. So uh, there was the one gym that I went to, uh, and uh, it was run by this Turkish world champion wrestler. And I went in to meet with them. Uh, I think I talked about that on the show last week. And they had me fill out a long piece of, uh, you know, a big packet to make sure that I don't die on their watch. And uh, and I, I and I, in a moment of impulse and haste, I went, you know what? Fuck this. I'm signing up here. I'm signing up because they turn people into animals and I was all for it. So I was like, let's do this. So I signed up for six sessions with them. Uh, six sessions, 400 bucks. And uh, they were like, good, awesome. When can you come? And I said, I'll be here Friday. They said, Friday at five. And I told you the guy's like, uh, well, we'll start you slow. And I go, fuck that. I'm only doing six sessions. Let's, I'm going to puke. I am going to fucking throw up. He's like, fine. All right, let's do that. I said, good. I'm excited. Uh, and then I walked out and I looked around and, uh, you know, I mentioned it was this, you know, monster Turkish wrestler. And I, I, uh, I don't know who I am as a guy. I mean, I, I, I know who I am as a guy. I, I want uh, testosterone. Like, I, I just think that it should be. The gym should be an angry place. I mean, I, I know that sounds stupid, but it, you should. Everybody should be single-minded of purpose and, and fucking taking care of business. Well, when I walked out, I looked around, and there were uh, a couple of old ladies on bozu balls, and uh, and there was an older man doing like five-pound curls, and uh, it was there was no real vibe of hey, let's all fucking fight. You know what I mean? And I, I don't know, I don't know why I want to do prison lifting. That's what I want to do. I want to, you know what I should do with it? I should rob a bank. When I since I've already falsified documents with Chip Chinnery's name on them, I can w- go ahead and get pinched. Get thrown in jail and then work out there at the prison yard because apparently that's the attitude and atmosphere that I'm looking for. Uh, because everybody seemed so nice and patient and calm and it was quiet. And uh, I, I just, it wasn't for me. It, I didn't think, but I didn't give a fuck because I'm going to get in there and I'm just going to, I'm single minded of purpose. I'm going to tear it up. So I made an appointment for Friday at five o'clock. I did the podcast with you guys and uh, I was excited and interested and could not wait to get started. So Friday came. And uh, I woke up at like four in the afternoon, blew through a banana. That doesn't sound good. I ate a banana, <laughs> blew through a banana. That's in a, that's in a different show entirely, folks. Uh, I ate a banana to get ready to go work out with George, who I think I may have mentioned on here. George is a Chinese fella. And uh, and so and it was about after what happened in year four, it was about time the Asians turned the tables on me. Right. So I was excited to go. I went in to uh, work out with George. And I show up at the studio and uh, this place, I should mention, it's in a strip mall and it's upstairs from like a pizza joint and a bagel joint. It's not like a gym gym. It's just it's like a storefront gym, which I uh, again, I don't mind when I was working out with remember when I was working out with Sean, uh, the guy who volunteered. To, he was going to help me out and he was going to help for free. And, and uh, he wanted to use the Lord's gym, which was out in a park where I was throwing rocks around and fucking climbing a tree. And then I was like, ah, you got a secular gym? He's like, yeah, I do. And then he had bull ropes and fucking pads and all sorts of, you know, he had actual equipment that was in a garage. That wasn't, it was in like a, literally you pulled up, it was like a garage door and then there was workout equipment there. It it was an industrial area, but it was essentially the garage of a building. And that's where they put this gym in. So I, I I don't mind working out in funky spaces, but it just, uh, I don't know. There was something about this joint. So I, I show up. And I know you're out there, you're thinking to yourself, Mike, you're just looking for excuses to stop. You're looking for reasons to not do this. Bullshit. I just need everything to be absolutely perfect and the way I want it to be, or there's just no point in doing stuff. Isn't that correct, folks? (laughs) I know who I am. So, uh, so I had to go to results or to, you know, the studio and uh, I show up and it's dark. I, I look from the outside. It's dark. Karen dropped me off. And as I'm sitting in her car talking to her, uh, George walks by the car. He's like, you ready? I said, yes, I'm ready. So we go upstairs and he unlocks the door. There's nobody else there. It's just me and him. Uh, so I'm like, all right, well, that's, I guess I can deal with that vibe. And uh, he goes in and he turns on, they have satellite radio. And it, he put on like top 40 satellite radio, which... I, I again, I, if you go to the gym, you don't get to choose the music, and usually the music is they use it to appeal to everybody. But dude, we're the only people here. Put on something that I'm ask me you, uh, again. I'm a child, all right. I wanted him to ask me what do you want to listen to. I want him to go because uh, I'm I'm paying. I know this sounds so stupid, but whenever I pay, I always feel like they should do what they can to make the experience work for me. They should reach out to me. They should make it the way I want it to be, especially working out i mean that's because it's death you don't want to be there nobody wants to fucking be there and uh as little as i wanted to be there you know who wanted to be there less george uh i signed up with him and he was all gung-ho and then when i see him we go into the gym and uh he's like all right and he was a nice guy again he wasn't 
bad. I've had bad trainers. I've had bad trainers who stuck me on a treadmill for 40 minutes and then walked away. And then come back and go, oh, you ready? Let's do some push-ups. You know what I mean? Like, they're just terrible, terrible. Because they think you're fat and you're not going to stick to it. Okay? George cared. All right? But what... But what I, he never asked me, he's like, he could have, uh, again, I'm a child. I'm a child. I want people to ask me what I want to do, and then we can build it around what I want to do. Because I had mentioned to him, look, you guys got MMA equipment. I really want to, I want to grapple and punch and hit stuff. Uh, I'm very aggressive and physically, you know, I'm, I'm into doing that as well as other stuff. You can incorporate it all in because it needs to be interesting for me or I don't want to do it. I don't look, I don't want to do it fucking anyway. All right. I understand I have to do it. I should do it. And I'm excited to do it, but I don't want to fucking do it. So he should incorporate it and talk to me and figure out a a plan. Uh, Like, shouldn't he had seen me on Friday? So I'm I'm sorry, on on whatever Tuesday to sign me up for Friday. Shouldn't he have given some thought into what the plan would be? And uh, I I told him I hadn't worked out in like almost you know 25 months. And uh, so we we get in there and he's like, all right, first we're going to do this. And he pulls out a there's a thing called a speed ladder. Uh, It's essentially a, a drill that they use for football camp. They they roll out a ladder on the ground. And you you just run in the ladder. You you know run one step and then you turn around and come back more steps. You turn around and run and you run and then you double you two step it one two one two one two one two one two and then you four step it one two and then side side one two side side one two side side. Uh, so he goes all right go, and uh, he just hits the stopwatch, and uh, so I'm ready and I did, so I did I ran and I'm running back and forth you know it, and and not running like sprinting because it's a small and confined area, but I'm basically tiptoeing through this speed ladder. And then he's, all right, switch it up, go to twos, and I go to twos. Then he switch it up and go to fours, I go to fours, and switch it up and go back to ones, and I'm going back and forth. And uh, and he's like, time. And he, it, all it was was six minutes on the speed ladder. So I did six minutes, and at the end of it, folks, uh, you know, uh, let's. I'm woefully out of shape, so I'm fucking, I'm sweating already and breathing super heavy. Uh, and another thing is I'm really hard on myself at the gym where I keep apologizing almost to the trainer and going, look, I'm, I'm not a pussy. I swear I'm not a pussy. I'm sorry if I get gassed or whatever. And they're like, you know, they hold my hand through it and they're nice about it, but still I feel awful about it because I think, because I'm, I'm mad at myself that I've let myself get into that position. So we do the speed ladder. And then George is like, you okay? I says, yeah. He goes, all right, now we're going to do uh, this. And uh, I had to do Russian twists, which is, you know, you get a medicine ball and you go side to side. And, uh, I, so I do the Russian twists and that's fine. He goes, all right, now we're going to do bent over rows. And so I, uh, but with the machines, so I, I had to do squats. All it was was cardio stuff. I wasn't doing any, anything physical, like really rampaging. So um, about 20 minutes into the workout, he's like, all right, keep doing that. And uh, he took a phone call in the middle of it. And, uh, and he walks away and he's on the phone and he's walking around talking and I'm I'm still doing my workout and doing what I'm supposed to do, but it, it just it got it it pissed me off so much. It, and it shouldn't have. It really shouldn't have, I guess. Uh, but we're the it's and it, he's at a place of business and the phone rings and he's the only guy there. I guess he's got to pick it up. But he picks he picks up the phone, and he talks to this person for like ten minutes. Uh, and I so I stop and I relax and I'm and I'm kind of winding down. But I will also I'm honest with you I'm I'm really breathing heavy like I'm, I'm winded and so I do some jumping jacks to try to because I uh, when I was working out with Richard uh, who I've mentioned on here many times and apparently I should marry uh, <laughs> we would do stuff and then in between sets you would just keep perpetual motion going to keep your heart rate up you would do jumping jacks you would just do uh, these leaps in the air like kind of jumping or uh, all sorts of stuff and uh, when a trainer walks away and just leaves you standing there in an empty gym it's just it's just frustrating because you're like well I, I, there's stuff i could do that i know i should do but if he, and if he had told me there's a circuit or go ahead and do this that's fine but it just it just seemed like I, again i'm paying i'm paying what the fuck you doing uh so then he comes back over and he's like all right do this and he, he put me through my paces with yeah, i just did regular push-ups and then i did more squats and more stuff and uh and then he had me run some more and then uh we're about 35 minutes in now and uh i started to I got sick. I dry heaved um, from hyperventilating, from from breathing heavy and pushing myself. And he even told me, he's like, well, I didn't I didn't think you'd even last this long. And I'm like, no, I, I'm, I'm not a pussy about this. But I, and then uh, I started dry heaving <laughs> with a luckily there was only a banana in me, so it didn't come out. But I mean, I was like I was in bad shape, like dry heaving. And uh, I had to sit down and, and I got dizzy uh, and I almost fell and I had to grab something and hold myself up. And he's like, you OK? And I says, yeah, I think I'm OK. He's like, uh, well, here, lay down. And I go, no, I'm, I'm okay. I'll fight through it. He goes, no, you don't fight through it the first time. He goes, you got to lay down and we'll, we'll, you know, get the blood to your head and we'll figure it out. I said, fine. 
So I laid down. He, he held, and he's like, "Lift your legs up." So I did, and he's he's holding my legs, and uh, I'm you know trying not to dry heave as I'm waiting for the blood to return to my head so I don't fucking faint. And I'm even dizzy. I got spins on the ground. And uh, he goes, "All right, put your legs up on this bench." And I put my legs up on the bench. He goes, "All right, hold on." And then uh, he went and made a phone call uh, because apparently he saw that. Uh, I was down, so he didn't need to pay attention to me. So he went and made this time he made a phone call. And what it was, was it was dealing because the first person who called, I guess, was looking for some lost and found stuff. And he talked to them for, you know, a few minutes. And then the second phone call was to call somebody else from the gym to see if they knew where that stuff would be. Now, look, I understand that's gym business and I shouldn't be worried about it. And I shouldn't be a a guy, you know, but I fucking I paid for your time. Fuck the phone. Fuck all the phones. I don't give a fuck if we're the only people here. I, I paid for your fucking time. I, it just, it infuriates me. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like, dude, this is the way it works. It's a gym. They do business. It's a place of business. There's nothing you can fucking do. So, uh, so I laid on the ground and stopped being dizzy. And I uh, got my head squared away. <laughs> and uh, he came back. And he was like, how you doing? I said, I think I'm fine. He goes, all right, come on over here. And uh uh, he had me do jump ups, uh, not box jumps, but like just just walk ups on a on the bench, you know, like stand up and climb on the bench. And and I was supposed to do clean and jerks with it because don't do the clean and jerk. We'll do that next time. And I said, all right, that's fine. And uh, so after that was finished, he goes, all right, well, we're done for the day. And I looked at the clock and we'd only we'd, we'd worked out 45 minutes, um, you know, and about eight minutes of that was me on the ground trying not to die. Uh, and I you know, they were hour long sessions that I had paid for and. Look, at that point, again, 45 minutes in, I don't know what there was left for me to do. I, I would have liked to have thrown some punches and uh, or do something stationary instead of cardio stuff to where I could actually or lift or, or actually lift weights um, because that's not that's different from cardio. But I, again, I didn't want to sit there and go, well, dude, we got 15 minutes left. I don't want to be I, I don't like when they're clock watching me and telling me that we're over an hour because Richard. Oh, God, Richard. Stop talking about Richard. Um, but but Richard would he would train me and we'd we'd go for like an hour and fifteen minutes sometimes. I mean, and then at the end of the session he would stretch me out like he would do this thing where he'd fucking you know pull my ankles up over my head and uh, it was you know seriously I was excited. Hey, believe me, I didn't being compared to being sent off to the treadmill and stood on my own to have a guy who wanted to stretch my fucking arms out and like it was like yeah I do and encouraging and rah rah the whole fucking time because hey look I'm flexible I can get my ankles over my head so what I can uh, believe me. That's that's the whole, my whole goal of losing all my weight is so I can blow myself. All right, so uh, seriously, I'm just a huge gut away. All right, so <laughs> so uh, so he finishes his thing and he comes over and we're done after 45 minutes and and uh, he he just and again I'm my problem is I'm comparing everything to Richard 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 because Richard was like gung ho and he was so into it and he was excited and, you know Big Mike let's go let's do this uh, here's an example. Um, uh, you're you're tired of it. I don't care. One time uh, when I would work out on the treadmill, you know, when I would first start out doing it, I would walk for a mile, you know, and I'd be crazy sweaty and gassed at the end of it. But then as I started to get adrenaline and get into shape and lose weight, I could go longer and faster and, and increase the speed and actually run. Instead of just like walking a mile, I could run like a mile and a half to two miles. And I would turn the speed up and uh, I would have my earbuds in and I would be fucking, you know, cranking anthrax or whatever the fuck in my earbuds. And, uh, and then I would start kind of challenging myself where I'd turn the speed up higher and I would high step on the treadmill, not just jog in place, but I would actually high knees on the treadmill and fucking bust it out. And, uh, I didn't sing, but I was like, I'd fucking be banging my head and like mouthing the words and all that shit. Well, the thing is, you know, I weighed 300 pounds. So, uh, I have my earbuds in and I'm hearing music and I, and I don't know what's going on, but Outside, I don't realize everybody's staring at me because it's like, womp, womp, womp. I'm pounding the fucking treadmill. I'm a huge dude and I'm going high knees and my feet are landing really heavy and the whole thing is shaking. The guy next to me is shaking and I didn't fucking care. I got my earbuds in and I'm cranking it. And Richard comes over to me and he, he points at his ear, the, my earbuds and I pull them out. I go, what's up? And he goes, he goes, big Mike, big Mike, you're shaking the whole building down. <laughs> And I look around and I realize people are laughing. And it's funny because Karen told me later, she's like, people were laughing at what you were doing because like they were marveling at how excited you were about it. But at the same time, it was crazy, like the, the amount of noise and you were so into it. They, and they, they were kind of admiring it a little bit. And so Richard's like, you're shaking the whole building down. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. And I, and I slowed it way down. And I looked around and people were like looking at me and kind of tittering and trying not to make eye contact. And I looked at Richard and I go, well, do I got to, do you want me to stop? And he goes, Hell no, boss. Keep going. Like, he, and he smacked me in the chest, and he's like, "Just do it. Just you know, just do what you got to do." And he like walked away. 
And I was like, fucking, yeah, exactly. Don't fucking care. Do what you got to do. Um, whereas with George, it just, there was no rah-rah. There was no, it was, it was a guy, he, I was another appointment. He didn't give a fuck about me. He didn't care. And he was nice enough. He wasn't bad. He took the two phone calls and whatever the fuck that's business. But he, he was nice enough to me, but he didn't care. And I don't know why I care that somebody cares. I do because I have a fucking hole in my soul. All right. I have this, this empty, listen to the first half of the show. You hear how fucking empty I am as a person. All right. I, I, I reach out for, for kudos or admiration or love. I mean, I, I, I equate iTunes not having my logo up with them judging my show and hating it. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just stupid, but that's who I am. Uh, and it's just, it's a horrible feeling. So I just, to feel like uh, I had hired him and he went through the motions with me, uh, and to know that I still had five more appointments, but in my head, I'm like, you know what? Tough it out, dude. This is what you need to fucking do. Tough out the five more appointments. Just fucking do it. And maybe by the end of it, it changes because you'll be changing the more you come and then he'll be changing and you'll get to know each other better. Just fucking deal with it. So we're sitting there and, uh, and he was a nice enough guy and he's telling me stories about other people that he's trained. He's trained young people and old people. And, uh, he, he's giving me generic trainer speak. Just that whole, uh, you know, before you know it, you'll you'll feel better and it'll be okay. And I just there was nothing specific about me. It was just it was again. It was very much. It was very rote. All right. It was very much what he would tell anybody who was there. Uh, and and I want to feel special. <laughs> so I sat and talked to him, and it seemed fine. But uh, like I said, we only did about forty minutes, forty to forty-five, uh, ten of which he was on the phone. And, uh, and I said, well, fuck that. Who cares? You know, maybe it's because if there's nobody here, you know, if I come here at an earlier appointment, there will be people here to grab the phone. I don't, I don't fucking know. I, I, but I was still uneasy, but at the same time I was also trying not to fucking die because I stood up and, uh, I had hyperventilated so much. My throat really hurt. So it went all the way down into my chest. Like as I breathed, I could feel it in my chest. Uh, but that's good. That's what you're supposed to be doing because you know what? I'm, uh, I'm still a fucking caterpillar. All right. And uh, and uh, the butterfly is trying to burst out, folks. So uh, so that's what it was. There was a butterfly in my chest and it was starting to flap its wings and it's trying to burst out through all of this nonsense caterpillar bullshit. Uh, but at the time, still, I was a fucking down in the mouth gray caterpillar. So we walked outside. I walked outside with George and uh, he locked up the gym and uh, he didn't. I, I was waiting to pay and he didn't charge me, which was weird because I had I have not paid for these sessions yet. Um, because I think I told you when I first signed up with them, they said you get one free introductory workout uh, and then you choose what you're going to do. So when I showed up the day to sign up, I didn't work out. I was like, ah, fuck it. You know, I'll just take six. So we left and uh, I went downstairs. Karen picked me up and she's like, you OK? And I was I was really kind of shaky, but sweaty, but felt good because this is what you're supposed to do. It's uh, you know, it's, it's this is how it starts because you've let yourself get to this point. You're going to feel shitty for a while. Uh, but George, you know, George waved goodbye and he got in his minivan, drove off and he's my age. That was another thing. He's my age and he's like a Taekwondo champion and he's a trainer, but you, you just see that he showed up for his hour, put in his 45 minutes and then left. I got in the car, we split and, uh, and I felt lightheaded, but happy. I got home and I peeled off my clothes because they were soaked. My clothes were fucking, even after 45 minutes of just running and push-ups, I was soaked. Uh, and again, I didn't want to do anything exotic, but it would have been nice to mix something in. So uh, I peeled off my clothes and literally just pulled on a pair of sweatpants. And I went in the living room and I sat down in a chair. And it was it was 5 o'clock and I'm never up at 5. So Karen's like, you want to do something? And I'm like, yeah, eventually. Uh, and she had to shower and do some stuff. So I sat down in my big, I have a big overstuffed chair. And I just sat there and I watched... Uh, my cake show where they, they make cakes because it's just fucking garbage for the soul. I mean, that's all. It's just, it's just, and sweet genius. I watched that too. Uh, and I just sat there and just let it marinate over me as I didn't move. I just breathed and didn't move. And I was sore. And I, I was, like I said, I had been sweaty, but I'd peeled my clothes. I was just, and I didn't, I vegged out. That's exactly what I did. Was I went away and sat there for like an hour and 15 minutes and didn't move. Just drank water and watch TV. And then I stood up, got in the shower, Karen and I went out, and uh, we had sushi. And I was sore, but then the next morning is when it, you're really sore. I wake up the next morning, and, and that's, but that's the best feeling. The next morning I wake up and I go, oh yeah, I have pectoral muscles. I forgot about those. You know what I mean? Because it's like you go to move and your chest tightens up and you feel them, and you're like, yeah, that's right, I can feel that. And uh, groin muscles too, because I'd been doing squats and running and calves. Everything was sore, but that's the way it was supposed to be. 
So this is Saturday, and I'm getting through it, and I have to work out again with George on Monday. Uh, so I go to work Saturday night, and I wake up, and I'm still sore. I'm stretching now in the morning. I haven't started the running the, the mile a day yet, the, mile, the Mike's Miles. I haven't started that yet. Um, and by the way, people have suggested, they're like, hey, there's a cool Nike program. I'm looking into all of that. Sue, uh, our friend in Boston, was like, there's this Nike thing, and if you get it and you tweet when you're working out, people will retweet you, and then they get cheers in your headphones like it's some weird high, you know, thing i don't know and and that's believe me as we know that's exactly what i want i don't give a fuck if it's zombie people cheering me i need cheers to keep me going i don't care if it's lily's 10 toes with their shocked faces watching me run and rooting for me i'm in as long as there's a crowd who's excited for me i'm happy so uh so i'm looking into all of that stuff so uh saturday comes sunday comes and i'm at work and i'm sore and i'm stretching and that's fine um but uh but i was still just I didn't feel good about having worked out. I felt good about it, about finally getting off the schneid, but I just didn't like the way, like I said, in my head, I kept telling myself, and again, I'm wondering if this was me just trying to avoid it, you know, I, I, cause I know who I am. And, and so I started in my head go, well, that was bad and it could have been better. And yes, it could have been better, but you're fat, shut up and fucking work out. But you know, what's funny is that's the trainer's attitude. Like, why am I taking the trainer's attitude toward myself? I know who I am and what I want. If I'm paying, why the fuck should I adopt their attitude? Shut the fuck up and do what I say. That's stupid, right? I don't know. Uh, so Sunday I'm at work and I'm thinking about it. And I'm all, you know, because when it's quiet, that's all I got to do is think. And uh, it gets to be early Monday morning. And uh, I have an appointment to train Monday night with George. And uh, the owner of the building comes downstairs. And I've mentioned the owner of the building before. Again, he's five years older than me, but he might as well be 50 years older than me. Well, he's sick too. He has like a, he had a liver thing and he had a bunch of diseases. So he comes downstairs and uh, he was all spry and he was happy for some reason. And I'm like, Hey, what's going on? He's like, what's going on, Mike? I said, mm, I just asked you that what's going on. And he's like, uh, I feel great. And I said, Oh, good for you. And he's like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm, I, I'm actually, I might start lifting weights again. And I said, Oh, good. And, uh, he's like, it, it's a huge thing for him because he was really sick. Um, and I guess he starts telling me that when he went to the doctor the first time, he weighed 380 pounds. And then he had this illness, and uh, he had to wait for some things to happen, but they put him on this strict diet. So he's been experimenting with his diet ever since. So for two years, he's been trying, he's cut out beer, and then he's, uh, he started to cook with spices instead of salt, and he's telling me all these, and again, as I've told you, he doesn't need permission to talk. I mean, he just runs downhill, and I just sit there and go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he was more, he was almost like Hulk Hogan animated. He's like, it's unbelievable, Mike. I feel so good. And the weight has just fallen off me. And I weighed myself and I've lost about 165 pounds. It's unbelievable. And you know, it's, I, I can feel it. I feel strong. And now I just need to try to go ahead and get that surgery where they fix your body. You know, because like, I got this. And he goes, you know, I got my stomach. And he lifts his shirt up. And he grabs his stomach, like as like the, the weight on his, and he's shaking it at me basically. And he's like, "Look at this! It's just there, and that's fine. Eventually, it's gonna go away because I'm gonna work at it and figure it out. But it's like my whole body is changing, and I'm getting back to be who I was. And I'm so excited to be back who I was. You know what? My chest hair is growing back. Look at this!" And he pulls his shirt up, and he shows me his chest, and he like basically thrusts it in my face. He's like, "Look at my chest hair! It's coming back right here. It's unbelievable. I feel so good. Like it's just because after going through all the treatments and everything, I never thought this would happen, but..." Now I'm feeling like like myself again, and I recognized myself in him. I recognized the the enthusiasm and, and being so excited and, and realizing that you were becoming what you wanted to be and things were changing for you. And he's and I so I didn't even realize the fact that his awkward nudity was freaking me out, that he's standing in my work office with his shirt basically off, and then he's like, Yeah, my hair's growing back, even my armpit hair. Look at this. And he takes his shirt off. He's so excited and so happy about who he is and what he's becoming. He takes his shirt off and he lifts his arms up and he's like basically doing like a muscle man pose and he's showing me like his chest hair and his armpit hair and he's like, oh, I'm so excited and he's and I'm as I'm I'm actually starting to get excited for him. Like I and uh, he's like, yeah, you know, and I did it my way. That's the most important part. I said, what do you mean you did it your way? You got sick. And he's like, well, yeah, but after I got sick, he goes, I had, I had gotten myself into a position where it was so bad. I had gotten sick and I couldn't move. And I, I, I was, I weighed so much and I was drinking, you know, a 12 pack or a case a night. And, uh, the doctor told me what to do. And I said, you know what? Fine. That's, I can do this. And so they gave me a diet, but I made it my way. And I decided to just cut out all salt. And I went ahead and I did this and I exercised my way. That was the whole point. I did it my way. So the fact that I'm this way now doing it my way makes me happier than I am if I had relied on the doctors to make me this way. 
And uh, I thought about what he was saying. And he's right. If you're going to do this, you don't force yourself to do it the way other people think you should do it. You do it the way you want to fucking do it or else there's no point. There's no point. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to work out. I don't. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you folks. It doesn't appeal to me. It's not something that I like to do, but there's no better feeling in the world than after you work out. Uh, when I vegged out in the big overstuffed chair, I should tell you, I finally stood up to take a shower. I jumped in a scalding hot shower. It was the best feeling in the world because you, you've accomplished something. Like I said, you can't move because certain parts of you hurt, but you, and you still smell kind of like your knee pads and sort of like the gym, but you're just going to fucking scrub all that off of you and be new and be, and, and, and change and be what you want to be. Uh, and so to hear him say that to me, it drove the point home where I was like, yeah, why the fuck should I settle? Why should I do what other people think I should do? If I'm doing this, I got to do it my way and do it the way that I want to do it. Uh, so I went home and I had an appointment with George that night and, uh, I was supposed to be there at five and in my head, I'm like, well, go do one more with him. And then, and then that's it. And, uh, time was ticking by and I'm sitting up and I had to get some sleep. Obviously I gotta get, I haven't been sleeping. So uh, I had, I, in my head, I'm like, I got to at least get seven hours before I work out, even though that's never going to fucking happen. Uh, and I went to bed. I actually, I went to bed. It was like 11 o'clock and I had to be there at five. So I, I'm going to get five hours of sleep and I'm laying in bed and I'm thinking about the guy who owns the building and the situation that he had put himself in. And I said, you know what? He's right. Why the fuck are you going to make yourself go do things you don't want to do? If you're going to do this and you're going to do it the way you want to do it, that's the only way you're going to stick to it. So I made the decision at that point. You know what? Fuck this. I'm never going back there. I'm not training with that guy. So I got up. And Karen's like, why are you awake? I said, I have to figure out something. I don't want to work out with George anymore. She's like, good. I went, what? She goes, good. You were miserable on Friday when you came home. I go, what do you mean? She goes, I could tell in the car. Like, you weren't happy about your workout. You didn't say anything exciting. Or you just, you acted like it was a job. She goes, and if it's going to be a job, then you're never going to stick to it. Because my wife knows that I'm never going to stick to a fucking job. And I said, really? She goes, yeah. She goes, I, I totally knew that, but I didn't want to say anything because it was your first workout and I didn't want to keep you from doing it again. I said, well, I, I don't want to go back there. And she's like, well, what do you want to do? I said, I want to go see Richard. She goes, well, let's go see Richard. So I said, but, yeah, but I got to call these guys to tell them I'm not coming in and, and cancel the appointment. And, uh, and she goes, well, so do it. And I go, no, I go, you don't understand. I go, they're going to think I'm a pussy. And she goes, well, what do you care if they think you're a pussy? I go, but they are. They're going to think I'm a pussy. I go, it's, this, it's these monster wrestlers. I came and I worked out once with George, the Taekwondo guy, and they're going to think I quit. They're going to think that I just I, that I, I did it once and couldn't do it. And she goes, yeah, but you know that's not the case. I go, yeah, but they're not going to know that that's not the case. She goes, so what? What are you? You're never going to see those people again. I go, it doesn't matter. It's a, it's a, it's like a man thing. I know that sounds stupid to you, but I can't have them thinking that I'm a pussy who quit. She goes, so what are you going to do? I go, why? I don't know. I guess I could work out the last five, ep uh, five you know, appointments I have with him. And she's like, you just said you don't want to do that. I go, I don't. She goes, well, why would you do that? I go, said so I don't think I'm a pussy. She goes, why would you do that? <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm dreading making the phone call uh, because I, I just, I didn't want to go. I at least wanted to cancel that day's and see how it worked out. And I was talking to her and she finally walked away and left me to my own devices. And I sat there and I stared at the phone and I said, fuck this, make the call, make the call. So I picked up the phone and I dialed it and I, I called the studio and, uh, this is, this makes me laugh. When I signed up, I think I told you this, uh, I never saw the monster wrestler guy, the Turkish guy who owns the building. Cause I thought I'd be working out with him. That was the whole point was I wanted him to put me through the fucking paces and, and really get physical. And I wanted that. I didn't want a guy who basically acted like I was an afterthought. I wanted to be a fucking animal with Leo, the Turkish wrestler. Uh, but I never saw him. So I called up to cancel. Guess who answers the phone? Leo, the Turkish wrestler. And, uh, and he goes, Hey, uh, uh, you know, blank, blank, Leo. I think I've said the name of the place already. Who cares? And I said, Hey, uh, hi, my name is Mike Schmidt. I have an appointment with George tonight and I have to cancel that appointment. And he's like, all right, what time? And I said, five o'clock. And I go, and also, uh, I had other appointments with him. I, I, I won't be coming back to the gym. And he said, why? And, uh, I said, well, 
uh, my work schedule has changed, and unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to come in. And uh, also, there's a thing where I was working out with him. And I, I basically, I talked for like two minutes, making up an excuse because I didn't want to just say because George sucks. I mean, I, I didn't want to throw George under the bus. Uh, so I, I tap danced around it, which made me, you know, what that made me sound like, folks. A fat pussy who is quitting his training sessions. That's it, it. Went. It was antithetical to what I wanted to accomplish. I immediately made myself like sound like a fat pussy who talked himself out of training. Uh, and he just goes, "That's fine. That's fine. Whatever." And I, I, like he totally blew me off because he he's heard it all before. And uh, he goes, "That's fine. That's fine. Whatever." He just wanted me to stop fucking talking because I was embarrassing both of us. And I said, "Okay." So I just I just want to make sure he knows. And he goes, "Can you at least pay for the one session that you did with him on Friday?" Now. They had already said that I got one free workout. Uh, but at that point, I, in my mind, it was pussy tax. So I, I just thought, yeah. I go, how much? And he goes, $60. I said, yeah, that's fine. I go, uh, no problem. I go, do you want a check or cash? He goes, I don't care. Whatever you want to pay with. It just, he just treated me like an asshole. <laughs> And uh, and I said okay, fine. And again, that but that's who I thought he would be. I mean, that was if he, you know what, if he would have trained me on Friday, maybe I would have been up for that to get the fuck, you know, rum sodomy in the lash from that guy. Maybe not sodomy. I don't. Maybe I didn't want sodomy from Leo, the Turkish wrestler. Uh, although who knows? Maybe that motivates me. That makes me gets me going. Um, but that you know, if he would have been cruel to me on Friday, maybe it's a different story. But instead, he's cruel to me after the fact, and I look like a fucking pussy. And I'm just like, all right, so I got to pay pussy tax. And I hang up the phone. And Karen goes, are they charging you for that session? I go, yeah. She goes, that's the worst. She goes, that makes your decision even better that you're leaving these guys. I go, no, it isn't. I go, I, you know, they, I should pay for one session. She goes, no. She goes, you were supposed to get one free workout. And I go, it doesn't matter. It's, I, it's pussy tax. She's like, what? I said, never mind. So, uh, so we left. And we went to, uh, I said, you know what? First, though, I'm signing up with Richard before I quit. And she says, why? And I said, it's just, it's important to me. Because it means that I didn't just quit. It means that I had another plan. She said, okay. So I go see Richard, and he's there. And uh, Richard's not a trainer anymore. Richard like works in the front office of the gym. But I go, and I meet him, and I'm talking to him. And I explain to him, I go, look, you're the only... It's so funny. It was like it was trying to get an old girlfriend back. It was the weirdest <laughs> dynamic. Because I walked, and I go, look, you were the only person who ever cared. Uh, I, 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 every place I've, I've gone, they've, it's just been like one, I just had a one night stand with George. That didn't work out. Uh, other people in the past, they've been mean to me. They've neglected me and ignored me, but you were the only one who cared. And, uh, I said, do you still train people? He goes, I really, I don't, but I'll train you if you come back. I said, what? He goes, man, we did good work together. He goes, I can't let that go by the wayside. He goes, I, I want to be there for you. That's important to me, Big Mike. He goes, if you come back, I will train you. I don't train anybody else. I'll train you. And again, I teared up because I'm a pussy. And I was like, okay. I said, let's do it. So he pulled out the brochure. They got all Because again, it's now LA Fitness instead of Bally's. So he brings out all their paperwork and he starts showing me. And uh, I think I mentioned you, I saw Richard a few months ago. And I was going to do it, but I, you know, my taxes came up and I was putting stuff on hold and uh, there was an orientation fee, all sorts of bullshit. And I'm like, oh, I'll wait it out. And he had told me then, he goes, you know what? You really should sign up now because it's going to change when LA Fitness completely takes over. And I said, ah, whatever. He brings out the, uh, the binder and he shows me these numbers. And I was like, you're joking. And he goes, nope, these are the LA Fitness numbers. I go, we can't do the Bally's numbers. He goes, it ended because it's now the second quarter. He goes, if you would have done it in January, February, when I talked to you, you know, March, then we could have done it. But these are the new numbers. And I started to do the math in my head. And I'm, I'm uh, you know, it's the less sessions you get, the more it costs. And then it's, you know, it goes up exponentially, goes down also. And, and then there's a fee. And I said, can they waive that fee? No, they can't. So, uh, so I was furious. And then I look in uh, Bally's, or Lele Fitness, by the way, they've changed their training sessions. Now they're a half hour. They're not an hour. It used to be an hour. <clears throat> and I looked at Richard and I go, it's a half hour. He goes, yeah, boss. He goes, you know, I'm not going to do that to you. Uh, he goes, I mean, we won't get a full hour. Sometimes we'll get 45. Maybe we'll get an hour sometimes. He goes, I'll, we'll do what we can. He goes, but he goes, I got to be honest. They follow us around pretty quick about it. He goes, but because I don't train anybody else, I won't have anybody else on the books following you. So we won't really be bound to that. He goes, but that's just their rules. I said, all right. And uh, he showed me the number, and I said it, and and 
I, and there's all these things that were disqualifiers. And one of them said, you are not signing up to be trained by a person. You are signing up for personal training. So if you show up for an appointment and we give you to someone else, you have to work out with that person. And I looked at him and I go, I'm not signing if that's on here. And he goes, that just means if you go to another gym, like in another state or something, you can use a training session with somebody else. He goes, it's not going to happen here. I would not do that to you. And I know he wouldn't. Everybody else in the fucking building would, but he would. Because he and I are relating and we're talking, we're getting along, and sure enough, some meathead comes walking in, and uh, and I, because I'm fat and sitting in a chair talking to a trainer, the meathead looks at me and he's like, you just got to start, man. As soon as you get started, put one foot in front of the other, you're going to be fine. Yes, I understand that, meathead. I don't need a pep talk from you. He goes, here, take a look at this. He pulls out his phone and he's got a fat picture of himself. <laughs> See that? That's what it was like before I started working up. And, you know, you can do the same thing. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yes, I understand that. I, like, I, I almost wanted to just jump up and fight him. Like, I was so fucking mad. It's like, dude, don't patronize me. I don't need your hey, fat guy. You can be good. You can be a productive member of society if you want to be speech. I, I know what I can do. I've done it in the past. Uh, so then he walked out. And Richard just rolled his eyes. Uh, and then Richard showed me the numbers. And I, I said, well, you know, this doesn't make any sense. And this doesn't make any sense. And I said, you know what? If you're going to do this, fucking do it. Just fucking do it. Uh, so I signed up for a year of personal training. Not six sessions, not eight sessions, not four, not a trial. I know I'm going to do it. And I know Richard's going to do it with me. And as long as I'm doing it with the guy who is going to be there for me every step of the way, then why the fuck do I not make the commitment? So I did. I signed up for, uh, it's 110 sessions. Uh, and I like to go three times a week. And I actually asked him, I go, can I do double sessions? Like, you know, half hour, stack on a half hour. He goes, let's start slow. But yeah, definitely. He goes, I can do that if you want to go back to back. Uh, and I'll go three times a week. So it's not really a year. They call it a year, but it's, Five months, uh, which will get me to September and the Warrior Dash in Portland. Uh, so I'm, I'm covered for training all the way through that, certainly for cardio and certainly for lifting. And certainly at some point, I'm going to say something funny. I promise there will be funny at some point in this podcast. As I realize now, I've just spiraled out of control and just given you a basic. Uh, uh, here's what I did Friday. Honestly, that's what the show just became. Here's what I did Friday. God fucking damn it. Uh, you know what? I don't deserve a logo. I don't deserve a logo in the iTunes store. <laughs> As it is. Honestly, the, with this show, they'll hear it. They'll actually listen to it and just go, yeah, fuck. But why should we even find the logo? We didn't even put it to show in the fucking store, <laughs> let alone a logo. Awful. Uh, so so I signed up with Richard, and then he, uh, he goes, hey, you want to do the BMI and all that bullshit? And they got to weigh me in and figure out numbers and measurements. Uh, and I'll spare you all that bullshit, but let's say it's awful. Uh, but I will tell you this. Uh, here's what I weighed in at, folks. You, you want to know where I weighed in? You, you were following me. Remember last July, and then I lost a ton of weight, and I got down to like, I think it was 310 was where I got. It was the lowest I got. Uh, and I had started at 360, so I had lost 50 pounds from uh, July until December. Hey, from December till April, I went ahead and put all that weight back on. Uh, not all of it. I'm at 344. That's what I weighed in the other day. So right now, I am where I, am, where I was at the end of August. Because I had lost 15 pounds the first month from 360. So, uh, so I'm at 344 right now. And, uh, and I talked to Richard to schedule workouts and stuff. And uh, I was going to work out with him this week. But, uh, but I, I've got to be honest with you. I am trying to figure out my schedule. To work out in the morning is weird to me. Because that means I stay up all night. And then I go work out and then go home and go to bed. And I, I hate that fucking feeling. So, because I get my adrenaline pumped up and I don't want to do that. So I have to work out at night, which is even worse because then it's like nighttime. I, fuck, dude, I'm weird. I'm, again, a vampire. I can't figure it out. Um, so I start with Richard May 1st uh, because it didn't make sense to work out with him tomorrow because I then am going to Cleveland next week uh, and I want to start, I have to work out three times a week and I can't next, so next week, Tuesday is out. You don't care. Nobody gives a fuck. All right. But the bottom line is May 1st. May 1st is my first appointment with Richard. Uh, that doesn't mean I can't go and do cardio, which I will. Uh, in the interval, I will go, you know, do start Mike's miles and start walking a mile, a mile and a half every day, uh, which is great. I'm excited about that. Um, so we finish with Richard. We get, he weighs me in. We do all that. I'm there for like, you know, two hours. I got to meet meatheads and get another photo taken and all sorts of stupid bullshit. And, uh, and then we leave and Karen's like, well, that was good. I'm glad that Richard signed you up. I said, I'm excited too. Let's go to the other gym. And she's like, why? I said, I've got to pay them. I have to pay them for that final workout. She goes, well, why don't you just send him a check? I go, ah, fuck that. Let's go. Because uh, cause I didn't want to be a pussy. If I send a check, then I'm totally a pussy. That's like sending my girl to do it. Hey, Carol, why don't you go pay them? I, I got to face them. I have to face this monster wrestler. 
uh, who I never laid eyes on. So uh, we get there, and I go upstairs, and uh, I'm at the desk, and there's one person working out, and then a few guys, and this guy, Chris, comes over, who I had met earlier, and he goes, Leo! He calls Leo from the back, and uh, Leo doesn't come out of the back. He goes, Leo, you got a guy at the desk! And uh, Leo does not come out of the back. So this guy, Chris, walks over to me, and he goes, what's up? And I said, nothing, I have to pay for a session. Uh, and I talked to Leo on the phone, and he goes, oh, Leo! And uh, Leo, I see Leo in the back. He never moves. He doesn't respond. He doesn't get up. He it's like, and so in my head, again, I understand exactly what's going on. He's busy doing something. But in my head, I'm just thinking, he's thinking, ah, it's that pussy who called earlier. Uh, he might not have. He might have. I got no fucking idea. But I wasn't worth his time. I wasn't worth him getting up from the desk to come and talk to. So when Chris is, he calls Leo, Leo again for the third time, he doesn't come out. And Chris is like, well, who are you paying? I go, why? Well, I had to work out with George tonight and I'm not going to be. And he goes, oh, George is here. He's over there. And I look and there's George. And uh, I walked over to go, hey, George, how are you? And he's like, hey. And he was very friendly. And uh, and I said, look, I uh, I have to tell you, unfortunately, I won't be working out with you again. I just, I, I came, I talked to Leo on the phone and he said, I need to pay you for the one session. And uh, he goes, oh, okay, good. Uh, and I, so I hand him 60 bucks cash. And uh, he says, so what are you doing? And I said, I, I just, I can't come back. It just, it just didn't work out. And I, you know, my work schedule and I, I started to make up a bunch of lies again. And the, and George is like looking at me puzzled. And as I'm talking, I realize, you know, why the fuck are you lying? Why, why are you fucking, I go, you know what, George, I just didn't work, man. I go, it didn't work between me and you. I didn't like it. And, uh, and so I'm going to work out with another guy that I really enjoyed. And I, I, I pulled in my, I reached in my pocket and I pulled out the receipt from LA Fitness to prove that I had signed up for sessions with somebody else. And I go, so here, see, it's this guy. I had worked out with him before. Remember I was telling you about him when I was here on Friday because I'm sure he was tired of hearing about fucking Richard too. And I said, so I re-signed up with him. So I just want, I, unfortunately, it just didn't work out to go for the, the other five sessions with you. And, uh, and again, I knew that he thought I was a pussy and Leo thought I was a pussy. And George looks at me with that face and he just opens his mouth and he goes, the important thing is that you're going to do it. Whether you do it with me or you do it with this guy who you like, doesn't matter. As long as you take care of yourself, that's the most important thing. Aww. And then I felt like a total pussy. Like like I had completely... So then in my, in my head I want to go, oh, I'll work out with you, George. Like, where was this George on Friday? I like feeling George who was rooting for me. Now you're rooting for me, George. The other day it was like you didn't fucking care. You're taking pictures of a goddamn rainbow outside and taking phone calls while I'm sitting there sweating and hyperventilating for fuck's sake. I'm coughing a banana all over the fucking gym, and you're taking photos of the weather. God damn it, why wasn't this George here Friday? You would have gotten another $350 out of me, for fuck's sake. Uh, but he was very nice and charming, and then he didn't, he didn't ask to look at the receipt. I felt like I was giving him papers or something, like I was trying to cross the border to another gym. I had to leave this gym and stick him out here, take a look, here's my papers. He's going to peruse them and let me fucking go. Uh, but he was just, he was very friendly and very nice. And at that point, you know what I wanted to do? Honestly, I, wanted, I almost wanted to tear off my shirt and go, take a look. Look at my chest hair is growing back now that I signed up with Richard. And look at my armpit hair is growing back because I'm doing it with fucking Richard, God damn it. <laughs> So the bottom line, folks, is May 1st, doing it my way, the way I wanted to do it, the way I should have done it from the beginning. May 1st, back in the gym with Richard. And also May 1st, logo and iTunes. <laughs> because if there isn't, let me tell you something, the supplemental workout I get away from Richard will be me running to fucking Cupertino and kicking the shit out of everybody at the motherfucking <laughs> iTunes store. Because I am so tired of looking at purple circles and not Panda Boy. <laughs> you guys can get me at MikeAndMikeSchmidtComedy.com. You guys can be my friend at Facebook.com slash the 40-year-old boy. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Twitter.com slash the 40-year-old boy. You can follow our friend Lily at uh, Twitter.com slash Lily Von Stupp or Twitter.com slash MNTs if you want to be her Facebook friend at Facebook.com slash Lily Von Stupp. Hey, if you want to be uh, our friend Dave Hernandez, he, he got rid of that string of numbers. So if you want to be his friend, you can go to Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. Uh, and that's Mex, M-E-X. Don't, it's not M-E-C-K-S or anything ridiculous like that. So it's Facebook.com slash David Mex Hernandez. And uh, he's not on Twitter. So you can't follow him there. He has no interest in that. He barely has interest in Facebook. Um, and by the way, if you'd like to reach our friend Lily Von Stupp and send her a personal note, if you want to find out why there's even more drama in the swinger world than there is in the burlesque world, 
you can go ahead and write her a note at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Fur Punch Media, in conjunction with Von Stuck Productions and Mex Dog Mafia, is proud to present the main event of the evening. Five rounds of fighting for the inaugural 40 YOBFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the stripey corner. This fighter has pancake nipples, can't stand Lassie, and named his fists Hamburglar and Mayor McCheese. Andrew, bastard son of a hundred maniacs, Bennett! And his opponent, fighting out of the herringbone corner. This fighter sleeps in a crock pot, has a femur made of celery, and his ass has teeth, Evan Stinkfist Smith! And when the action begins, your referee in charge, Bong! And now, to the thousands in attendance, and the millions plugged into iPod vaginas around the world! I want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night on Santa Monica and Vine at the Three Clubs. It's the longest-running, most successful, hottest burlesque show in the history of Los Angeles, ladies and gentlemen. And I happen to know the producer. Her name is Lily Von Stubb. Hey, Lily. Hey, Michael. How are you? I'm, I'm okay. Fantastic news. Your hair looks great, by the way. Thank you. I, uh, I was worried when I had heard what had happened. Uh-oh. Our friend Lily last week twi- uh, tweeted that she had cut nine inches off of her hair. Uh, and I've been told that's big. I'm not sure if it is, but I've been told nine inches is big. Um, but when I see her hair, I see the difference in it. And it's not its not crazy like I thought it would be. Because your hair was down. I mean, I thought you had a bob. I thought you were back to having a bob. But your hair was past, uh, way past your bra. Um, oh, yeah. Way past. Okay, yeah. So, But now it's uh, past your shoulders. Uh, just past my shoulder bob. Yeah, I like it. But I mean, I, I thought you went back to shorty short, like your pumpkin photos. But uh, I wasn't sure. Pumpkin photos? Those are awesome. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Well, I don't know what else to call them. Yeah, well, your Bob photo, your short hair photo, whatever. Uh, so that's Lily Von Chip. She produces the three, uh, the Monday Night Tees at the three clubs in Santa Monica and Vine. How was last week's tease? It was amazing. Yes? yes. Who was involved last week? We didn't talk last week uh, about we it. We did a candy show, and oh, we and sold a whole bunch of stuff, including boxes like this that had candy and prizes in them. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was awesome. And you'll be doing that again, from what I understand. We will. That's good. That yeah. was a huge success. It was. So, you're, uh, uh, so now you've got a tease coming up this week. I do. Is it a theme show? Uh, better. It's it's ten imported tits. Whoa. Yes, the girls from New York are back. The dangerous curves ahead. How many girls is that? Uh, that would be five. Good. That works out. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would have been very disappointed if the math worked out any other way than that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so good. That's that's fine. What is their troop called? Uh, dangerous curves ahead. Uh, Mini Tonka, Anita Cookie, Darlinda, just Darlinda, Clams Casino, and Gigi La Femme. Gigi LaFemme. Nice. I'm sorry I have to say this. It has nothing to do with you, but it made me laugh. Uh, Jim Norton, who's the comedian from New York, he Twittered a clip of Randy Couture from the UFC choking him out. <laughs> and the, the clip's only a minute long. But Patrice O'Neill's in the clip. Patrice, who unfortunately died and was fucking hysterical. I wish I would have ever met him, although he would have made fun of me and I would have hated it. But, uh, but Randy Couture goes behind Jim Norton to choke him out. And uh, he's like, and he's like, all right, how do? And Jim Norton's like, how are you going to do this? And Patrice O'Neill goes, it's like ten seconds in, and Patrice O'Neill just goes, if you were ever going to choke out a clam, do it that way. <laughs> and I never even thought of it. Jim Norton looks exactly like a clam, like a cartoon clam. Oh my god! <laughs> if you were ever going to choke out a clam, do it like that. <laughs> so whenever I hear clam now, I think of Jim Norton. So when you say clams casino, sadly, I hope she's much more attractive than that. That's good news. Uh, so, are they the are they the only people performing? Yes. Wow. I'm okay. You, so, Lily Bunched Up is hosting, and we're the Dangerous Curves ahead. So, no local performers. It is a no in local, a, all imported titties. So, folks, you got to check this out because these uh, uh these women are doing on a cross country tour of some sort. They are amazing. It's uh, burlesqueonthegogo.com. They are all over the country, and they're probably in your town. Go fucking see them. They are awesome. Dangerous curves ahead. But if you want to see them in Los Angeles, you can see yeah. them next Monday night, uh, this coming Monday night, which is April 23rd. 
uh, at the Monday Night Tees at the three clubs on Santa Monica and Vine. Mini Tonka and Clams Casino and Darlinda Just Darlinda. They're all there, along with our friend Lily Bunched Up hosting. So go ahead and check that out. It will be a great show. And as always, remember, although wait after the car accident, uh, I'll tell you what, if you give, if you give Lily a, a gentle pat on the shoulder and $5, uh, apparently you'll get in for that amount. And <laughs> I suppose we'll see. Try it out, folks. Uh, but you, you don't want to get in free for this show anyway. You need to honor Dangerous Curves Ahead by paying for this show. Yes. That's what I say. And uh, uh, do like I did when I was in D.C. at the Chef Jose Andres's, because uh, he's never going to call me. They're never going to bring me out. I was a huge mistake. All right, so. Um, <laughs> Remember to go to Facebook.com slash the 40 year old boy and be my friend, as I've mentioned. But you can also sign up on many pages to bring me to your towns. Uh, there's controversy because I guess I didn't mention bring Mike Schmidt to Detroit last week. And some of the Detroit people are like, oh, my God, is that over? Well, no, I'm just dumb. I've, I, and I can't remember everywhere that wants me to go there. There's Fresno and San Antonio and Vancouver and uh, Buffalo and uh, all sorts of places that want me to go in Detroit. As I've mentioned, I tried in Detroit. I come, I've come very close. And I made, I made the mistake of writing on the Detroit page, hey, it was close, uh, but there's a lot of crazy in your town and it is now farther away. And people are like, I can't wait to hear about this. Well, sadly, I, there's no great story. It's just that I was close on a venue and then they flaked. <laughs> so once I can talk more about it, I will once I get a place locked down. But Detroit, you are still in the pipeline and I am trying. Uh, I was looking at a date in June, but that's not going to happen now because I have so many other dates in June. Dates like June 1st in Boston at the Cambridge YMCA Theater. Tickets still available for that. And uh, that, that's that's gotten stagnant, folks. Let's buy some tickets for Boston because it was like a huge rush in the beginning and then it stopped. Uh, so tickets available for Boston. June 15th, tickets are available for Kansas City at the Westport Coffee House Theater where I might be filming a DVD or an audio recording. Uh Depending on if I sell tickets, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And uh, then after that, in uh, we've just mentioned that Toronto is June 29th. I'm still working on my getting my passport and squaring that away, but I will definitely be in Toronto on June 29th, one way or the other. Uh, so that's at the Comedy Bar. So come on out to the Comedy Bar in Toronto. And uh, let's tell some people. Let's try to get that jazzed up, too. That'd be kind of cool so that guy doesn't think that I just suck. Uh, I don't know why it's important to me to prove to everybody that I'm okay. It's like I rented the thing and they get their money. Why the fuck do I need to prove to them that people want to see me? Um, so that's June 1st in Boston at the YMCA, the Cambridge YMCA theater, June 15th in Kansas city, June 29th in Toronto at comedy bar. And then remember July 27th at the Indie fringe theater in Indianapolis, Indiana, come out and check that show out, please. And, uh, more importantly, those are all big shows and those are in the future, but folks, uh, a week from this week, or a week in two days, a week from next Friday or this Friday, I will be in Cleveland, Ohio at big dog theater. I am playing phone tag over and over with the Cleveland people, trying to figure out exactly what I need to pay them and what and who and why. But uh, the bottom line is I would like to sell some more tickets. Uh, I plan on hard selling you via Facebook and maybe even via Twitter. I might tell them he's uh, to get on board. But, uh, yeah, it's a big room. Seats about 250, and uh, we have not sold 250 tickets. So plenty of tickets available for the Big Dog Theater. Go ahead and buy tickets for Cleveland. That would be great. I would appreciate it. Come on out and check it out. We'll uh, meet me and have fun. It should be exciting to be in Cleveland together next week. Uh, that's the 27th, April 27th, on Friday in Cleveland at Big Dog Theater. Remember to go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Uh, go to the Joe Business page. There is the link to the Zazzle store for mugs and mouse pads. There is the link to tweakedaudio.com slash 40, who have been kind enough to support this show. And uh, every time you buy something from them, whether it's an autoerotic asphyxiation earbud set or a cock ring watch, I get a cut of that, folks. That's right. As you're choking yourself into somnambulance while jerking off in a closet somewhere Keith Carradine style, remember, I've got some of that money in my pocket. Uh, why'd you make a face? Why are you sad? Are you horrified by that? That's what you do with these uh, earbuds and then these cock ring watches. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> you know what? The cock ring watch could actually be stretched around your neck, and then you wouldn't have to use the autoerotic asphyxiation earbuds to strangle yourself. And then you would use the cock ring watch to choke yourself out while you jerk off. This is perfect. It's perfect. Because then you could use the earbuds to still listen to the show. Oh, my God, it's perfect. All right, so. Uh, <laughs> while you're drinking yourself off into unconsciousness. Uh, just don't die, folks. We don't want that to happen. The last thing I need is for you to die with me on a loop in your head. Uh, although, wait, actually, that's pretty good advertising for the show. Go ahead and do that. Uh, well, no, don't die. I don't want you to die because uh, then, believe me, every loser, every or, I'm sorry, every listener that I lose means one more week that my logo does not show up in the iTunes store because they're keeping track of the numbers. They're like, one more person's not listening. Fuck his logo. Go with that purple thing. God damn that purple thing. I fucking hate it. Um, 
So go to tweakedaudio.com slash 40 and support them because they support us. As I mentioned, of course, Zazzle. And then there's the uh, download sets. There's the year one, year two, and year three. That was uh, the uh, Return of the Schmitties. Uh, the the two Schmitties? The lead, what, fuck, what are they called? It's, it's the Lord of the Schmidt set, which has uh, the Return of the Schmidt, uh, the Lord of the Schmidt, the Fellowship of the Schmidt, and the two Schmitties. All right, there you go. But it's the Lord of the Schmidt set. You can buy all three uh, years together. And that's changing soon. Uh, I don't know how soon. Again, we're we're bogged down in Kickstarter stuff now. But uh, once that moves, then we'll get the website done, and then everything will happen. And hopefully by year six, you'll be able to buy year four. I have no idea if it works out. Regardless, uh, as soon as I get my logo up on iTunes Store, then I'll actually feel like putting some sort of effort into this goddamn show. Okay? Does that sound like a, a fair deal? You guys write them and tell them what the fuck I said. Uh, so again, remember the download sets are available, and if you want to donate to the show, you can do so on uh, uh, MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Every single page, upper left-hand corner, there's a donation link that you can click on, and you can subscribe monthly to the show, or you can give a one-time donation to the show. Uh, I suggest you do both. <laughs> Why not send a one-time and also subscribe? That's what I would do if I was you. Again, I'm not you. Uh, and this is what I want to do for your podcast. If you have a podcast out there and you want me to donate or subscribe, uh, by all means, let me know. It's just, it's tit for tat. It's log rolling. It's you scratch my back and I'll consider scratching your back, but first I'll spend all your money. That's what I'll do. Uh, so make sure you go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com and check that out. And again, uh, once I start in earnest with the working out and stuff, I'm planning on blogging and doing all sorts of stuff. I hope you'll follow along, as I've mentioned. Uh, as some of you have already said, you wanted to be in the Warrior Dash, like our friend Eric Butterfield who was the first guy to uh, who basically started this podcast and told me he would do all the work, got me on board. And I said, okay, he had to get me on board with my own show. That's, that's how important Eric is to the 40 year old boy show. He actually got me on board with it and said, Hey, what if you did a show? And I said, yes. Okay. Thank you for convincing me. Um, he wants to do this workout and he sent me a text and he's like, ah, I completed my first three quarter of a mile run walk. And I said, great. And he goes in these, and he sent me a picture and he did it in combat boots. And, uh, and I don't know what point he's trying to prove, or is he, is he better than me? I don't know what fucking mocking he's trying to throw my way. But So I wrote him, and I said, good for you. I hope you'll get proper foot gear by the time we go to Portland. <laughs> because it's bad enough that everybody's going to have to carry me over the finish line. I don't think they want to carry you and your sore feet over the finish line, too, Eric. The fuck? And uh, Eric's like a gun guy. Maybe he'll just fucking shoot everybody when he gets to the Warrior Dash. That's a good move. He'll win, because then he wins by default. Just shows up, guns everybody down, and then he can just walk the course and win at the end of it. That's great. Uh, so remember to go ahead and check Facebook and check donating, check my f- website. And, and something I forgot to mention last week, uh, and it might be after the fact, but you can still get it. Um, Never Not Funny did their 300th show, the podcast Never Not Funny, and uh, that was the show that I started out on. I was on for the first 59, I think. Uh, and you can buy those actually year one of never not funny is available to purchase that I was on. And then of course their subsequent seasons are on and, uh, they're, they're okay. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's put it this way. They're remarkably Schmidt free until you get near the end. Um, but that first year again, like I said, if you want to pick that up, that's great. You can hear what it was like when I used to talk with other people. And then they did the 300th show. They had me in and, uh, and my buddy Pat, who's also their buddy Pat. And, uh, and then they had Elliot and Matt and uh, Dan, who's their intern, and Jimmy, of course, is the host. And uh, I'm not at 300 shows yet. We're in, uh, this is year five, so I would have to go another year, I think, to do that, correct? Because this will be year five. By the end of this, I'll be at 259. So if I'm going to have a 300th show, I'll have to do a year six. Um, I'm hoping to get to that number. I'm hoping to get, and let's put way, I hope to get to, year three, to show 300. Uh, and I'm hoping that when I get to show 300, I, too, have seven other people in the room with me to share the, the load of talking. <laughs> because if there's anything that this particular episode drove home, it's that I need someone to talk to. Finally, at this point, maybe year five is the time when I actually have to get another person in here or another microphone or another body. Or maybe I just go back up on the roof like I did in year three and I have a microphone and I try to talk to a jogger. I don't fucking know. But we got to figure something out, especially by the year the time.
uh, because I have a tone. Because you know why? Because I talk quickly and I don't, I don't fucking think. That's why. I think that's what it means when you have a tone. Is you don't fucking bother to care what comes flying out of your goddamn mouth. I try to grow the show and I want people to get on board and they're like, eh, I listen to it and you talk too fast. Really, I talk too fast. How the hell else am I supposed to cram all of this into a small three-hour window? Dude, this is, there's no script. I just go over this shit on the fly. It makes me laugh. If it doesn't make you laugh, turn the fucking station. And by turn the station, I mean turn the wheel of your car right into a guardrail. Jesus, fuck. Hey, where are you, where are you going, boy, boy, boy? 